Have you wondered what financial advisors actually think about finances? This is your sneak peek at the conversations within Financial Design Studio. Michelle Smallenberger, the CEO here, will be your host as you go behind the designs. All right. Welcome back to the podcast. I have Jake Turner, our financial planning associate, again with us. Welcome, Jake. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Good to be back. Yeah, it's good to have you. All right. So as we look at our show notes here, um, I'm reading this from the top. Can we do a podcast episode on Roth conversions that people will enjoy? Oh my gosh, can we? Our creative will director we? wrote this question for us. Absolutely. I think I it's mean, like a challenge. I think it would be hard to do a podcast on Roth conversions that wouldn't be enjoyable and entertaining. <laughs> okay, so challenge accepted? Challenge accepted. Okay, all right. Well, that's what we're starting off with today. In all fairness, we warned Anna we were going to say that, so she sets us up well. All right, so um, today's topic is actually from forever tax to never tax, and we're going to explain what that means and really just the thought of um, retirement planning, Roth conversions, how those play a big part, and how that can achieve that never tax that we're going for. Yeah, I think this is a, a good topic because inevitably, you know, and if you're listening to this, you know, maybe you are thinking about retirement, maybe you're already in retirement, but you're going to have different tax treatment on different assets. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, you know, we'll, we'll kind of put them into to three buckets today, you know, just to simplify things. Um, but we have, you know, a bucket that's always taxable. You know, this is things like your, maybe your workplace 401k, maybe you have an IRA, um, you know, the I mm -hmm. in IRA. Does anybody <laughs> know what that stands for? Yes. Right? In, yes. An individual retirement account? It's actually not. It's a joint account <laughs> between you and Uncle Sam. And, uh, and so, you know, you may see that account balance, but that is, you're going to pay tax on that eventually. So one of the, you know, great things about Roth conversions is you have a bit of control and we'll get into that a little bit more. And then you have things that you've already paid tax on. So we'll call those never taxable. That would be the beautiful, wonderful Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. um, if you, we could lump HSA into this as well, mm -hmm. um, although you may have never paid tax on that. If you, you know, use it for qualified medical expenses, you're not going to. So that's, that is great as well. And then we say like sometimes taxable, that's where we, we like your ordinary brokerage account. You know, if you've got a, a taxable brokerage account is what it can be called. You've, you've already paid income tax on the money from your paycheck. You've had some excess savings and rather than just squirrel it under your mattress or into a savings account, you've opened this great brokerage account. You've bought some, some ETFs, maybe some stocks some bonds. Um, so you're just going to pay capital gains uh, long term if you've held them for longer than a year or short term uh, if, you're, if you're a trader and doing it more frequently than that. So those are kind of the, the main three buckets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Um, so I had never heard the I. The joint well, account? The I does stand for individual, <laughs> but I had never heard that it's actually a joint account between you and I don't, the IRS. I wish I could take credit for that uh, quippy, <laughs> quippy line, but I, I'm sure I heard it, heard it somewhere. But yeah, it's, it's a joint good. account with it's you true. and Uncle Sam. So that is where that always taxable comes from, exactly, because at some point you have to pay that tax. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's fine because mm -hmm. ideally, you know, if you're making a, a good income throughout your working years mm -hmm. and you're contributing, you know, every other week or once a month into your mm -hmm. 401k, you're getting a great tax. You're not paying tax. You're getting a nice tax deduction yes. uh, at the end of the year, basically coming right off of your gross wages. You know, it's lowering your gross wages. So, you know, you've been enjoying the benefits of, of that tax deduction for years and years and years. But when you want to start to take that money out, now is the time. You got to pay tax sometime. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we've accepted this challenge of making an enjoyable podcast about Roth conversions. Jake would really like for me to make sure to mention that if you have questions, topics, or if you want to tell us if this was enjoyable, you can email that to podcast at financialdesignstudio.com and let us know. So we are always open to hearing yeah, well, ideas. Or if we say something today and you're like, wait a minute, can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. We'd be happy to entertain that as well. Exactly. Let us know. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So what we're going to do is just set up the scene, um, just really big picture when people retire. Um, and as I just really step back, when people retire, they stop working. And while you were working, you were saving money. But now that you stop working, you don't have money coming in. And so now you need to take that money to live from somewhere. And that is where that retirement account typically is where you take that money from. So this is that money that you haven't paid tax on. And so now that um, always taxable, this bucket, now that when you take money out, you're going to pay the tax then. 
What we're really trying to say is let's have different types of buckets. So you choose how much tax you pay rather than when you were working, if you earned 100000 and now when you're not working, you still need that same 100000 or you're going to pay the same amount in tax if it's just in a tax IRA, mm-hmm. if it's in the 401k IRA. So what we're trying to say is let's create some buckets so we could pay less tax, pay it at the lowest rates. Yeah, and, and the, another really big advantage and, and probably where you know, fin- financial planners can be a, a big help to people is, you know, let's say you, you retire at 65. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw another acronym in here, but I'll, I'll define it. You may have heard of something called RMDs or required minimum distributions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, those are now going to be starting at age 73 for some people, 75 mm-hmm. for others. Um, but y- let's say you retire at 65 and you need to start pulling this money out. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to take a set amount out now but you're mm-hmm. definitely going to when you yeah. hit that RMD age at 73 or 75. Mm-hmm. So that gives you this, what we call kind of a conversion window mm-hmm. where you can say, all right, I have this big IRA. Uh, my crack financial mm-hmm. planner says, I'm definitely going to pay tax on that. Mm-hmm. So I can use this opportunity to convert some of this money, you know, in this time before I'm required to take money out, yep. you know, mm-hmm. and that's, and that's one of the beauty. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing about a Roth conversion is, you know, you can decide how much tax you're going to pay in yeah. a given year. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, if I want to convert half a million dollars from my 401k into a Roth IRA in one year, I can do that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know yep. that I would want to, because yep. now all of a sudden my, my income is $500,000 for the year and I'm yep. going to be up in the you know 35% tax bracket now or 37 mm-hmm. in the future. So, so that's, that's where you want to, put some thought and really that's where the the beauty and it it shows up in everything. But tax planning is so critical when it comes to optimizing uh, how you're going to pay yourself in retirement. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting. So in this, this retirement transition, there's different ages that kind of kick in. So 65 is when Medicare you can sign up for social security could start as early as 62, as late as 70. Then you have these RMDs 73 to 75 that are now the ages. If you were, Younger before yeah. then you might have already started taking. Right. Um, so now it's like even someone, sometimes these windows we see could be like ages 55 to 65, 60 yeah. to 65, you know, it's 59 like 59 and a half. Yeah. Where there's like, no. Yeah. So after that 59 and a half, there's no penalty. No so penalty. You take that money out of a retirement account. And so these are the things where it's like the timing of this, depending on your specific plan and de- desires, when you want to be done working, this is where we can play with the factors because these things start at different times. Yeah. And and the biggest reason this is so important is because they all impact each other. Mm-hmm. So Medicare premiums are based on the income that you earned two years prior mm-hmm. and Social Security when that starts. So we just said if I needed, if I was saving or using 80 when I was working and now I need 80, well, you may not need all 80 from your retirement account because right. you'll have Social Security to make up some of that. Well, so now if I have distributions from my account plus social security. And now that combined amount affects my Medicare Mm -hmm. premiums. Wait, I could be paying more on top of earning more. And I think this is where a lot of people just don't realize their income can be just as high when they're not working and they're retired as it was when they were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And think about, you know, another thing there, maybe you've got you know, not as common, but you know, we, we certainly see clients with pensions as well. Mm-hmm. You yeah, may have a pension exactly. income or maybe you bought mm-hmm. an annuity that, you know, mm-hmm. the annuity payments are going to start kicking in. Yeah. Um, those are just things to consider when you're looking at your entire, you know, where all these sources of income are coming from, you know, instead of a paycheck, it's going to be a little more, you know, complex. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've been saving diligently all those years while you're working a great time to enjoy all the, all that money that you've saved. As long as you've got a plan in place and, and really understand, all right, by doing, by doing this, you know, whether taking a distribution from my IRA or doing a conversion, I know the impact it's going to have mm-hmm. uh, when it's time to pay my tax bill next April. Yep, exactly. Okay. So really, um, when we're talking about Roth conversions, we're saying there's someone who, let's just say at a very basic level, okay. someone has saved a lot of money into their 401k. So that that was like the That's vehicle typical. they saved into. That's very common. Mm-hmm. You work for your employer. A lot of times you get a free match mm-hmm. on that. Oh, yeah. So you're incentivized to put as much as you can and you want to because it also decreases your taxable wages mm-hmm. when you put that in there. So that is usually the biggest account that we see. So all this money in there. Let's just say there's someone who only has that. Okay. So with Roth conversions, we're really trying to say we need to create other buckets. Yes. 
So th in th with this case, with this person, we're saying you need some Roth money, um, taxable. And so depending on when you're starting, if you're starting when you're younger, so let's say that you're starting to get a plan in place now and you're 40, 45, you mm -hmm. have time to save into all these different categories. But someone who is starting their plan now two years from retirement, the one thing we might be planning is how to get money out of the 401ks eventually into Roths right. to give them two different types of buckets. Exactly. And then and that's where, you know, we would say in, in Michelle's example, you know, let's say you're two years from retirement, you, you have all of your retirement um, savings is in a workplace 401k, which will be converted to an IRA as soon as you retire, likely. We would probably say open up that Roth IRA now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yep. because there is what's called a five-year clock. And so you want that IRA to be open for at least five years um, so that when you decide to take the money out, you can take not only what you've converted, but also any earnings um, on those conversions as well. So we that, that five-year mm -hmm. clock is critical. Yeah. And that's like you could just open the account. It's not from... Yeah. Like when you fund it, it's exactly. open the account. Yep. So, um, okay. So we have the, so this is where recently, um, I was doing some continuing education and I heard this from forever tax to never tax. Mm. And it really stuck with me because in this 401k, this example where someone has a 401k, they retire. We talked about RMD. So mm -hmm. in the future, whenever money comes out of there, this is money that you need to live on. You will forever pay taxes yep. on that money that comes out. And so what we're trying to say is it doesn't have to be that way. We can move chunks before mm -hmm. so that now it can be from forever to never mm -hmm. taxed again. Exactly. So. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's, what's really, really cool. So, you know, you, you stop working, you effectively have no income. And let's also say in this example, you haven't started social security cause you're, you're going to push it until maybe later sixties or maybe even 70, just to get that, that mm -hmm. maximum benefit for you and for your, um, spouse, if, if they were to survive you, mm -hmm. uh, you say, all right, well, I want to, you know, convert, but I don't want to get beyond 12% tax bracket. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, all right. So you would convert just that money. Don't mm -hmm. tip yourself up into the next bracket, but yep. we're just going to convert a little bit. Yep. We're going to pay only 12% mm -hmm. of those taxes in this year. And maybe we'll do it again next year and maybe the year after that. Exactly. And so rather than doing it while you're still working and you're in the, you know, 24, 32% bracket, think yeah. about all that tax savings that you have just by being very intentional about that. I think that's, that is what makes this such a cool strategy. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we talk about this right now is in one of our most recent podcasts, we talked about how taxes are on sale for the next few years because our tax brackets are lower yep. and wider right now than they're going to be if nothing changes right. after 2025. Correct. So. Yeah. So you so got 23, 24, 25 mm -hmm. that we know of. Who knows? Mm -hmm. A lot can happen in four years. Exactly. But uh, yep. but yeah, that's that's a good point. Exactly. So this is why we really talk about this. Now, uh, what's interesting is we haven't said like, this is the plan all of our clients follow. Retire at 60, start doing Roth conversions, start Medicare, start RMDs, like start Social Security at this age. Mm -hmm. Everyone is so different. So different, yeah. Income levels are different. Account sizes are different. Yeah. So the years and the amounts that you need to do, like it isn't even the same for, for each client. It's not even the same amount each year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it that's could be. totally true. I mean, it, you know, such a gamut. I mean, you could have probably have some people listening that are have big, you know, multi-million dollar account balances mm -hmm. and have been mm -hmm. earning a, a great salary. They may just say, hey, when I do conversions, if I could just stay in the 32%, that would be awesome. Yeah. You know, yep. because to them, that's that's ideal. Just keep me out of that top bracket and I mm -hmm. will I will be happy. And so that's maybe that's what what's necessary. So yeah, I mean, this isn't specific financial advice to anyone. We're just mm -hmm. we're just describing these different processes and how they work. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the interesting thing where every it's kind of like every parent, if you have multiple kids, you're like every child is so different. Yep. Same parents same, you know, like you could say, raise them the same way, but yeah, completely different. Every financial plan, everyone has different goals. And so it's so different from yeah. year to year and things happen. So yep. things change. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about, we've, we've kind of, I think we've defined like what Roth conversions mm -hmm. are. We're trying to get money from a typical 401k IRA account into a Roth IRA so that you're going from paying taxes when the money comes out to never having to pay taxes again. Another what? benefit, real yeah. quick before you dive in there, the Roth IRA, there aren't any required minimum distributions mm -hmm. on that Roth IRA. So that's 
yet another reason to mm-hmm. uh, to move to get s- some money. And maybe it depends on your situation, obviously. But maybe you want to convert your entire mm-hmm. always taxable IRAs and four hundred one ks into Roth. It is possible to do that as well. And mm-hmm. then no RMDs. Oh, and this is actually we're going to kind of start to touch on like some of the problems that it does solve. Mm-hmm. So getting this money out, it does do away with the taxes. Like yeah, exactly. It starts to do away with some of these problems. The RMDs that we have to do, um, even if you have to take RMDs. So let's say you don't use all of your money you okay. put into a Roth IRA. Now that money passes on to your beneficiaries. Yeah. That, I mean, it is a really great way to pass on money. Like, again, this depends on your situation. If you, if you don't, you know, let's say, you know, I've got plenty of money, um, you know, that I, I have other accounts. I really don't need to touch my Roth while I'm alive, but I definitely want to leave that to mm-hmm. my children. Mm-hmm. Well, when you gift that Roth IRA to your children, they can, they can take that money out they're not going to pay tax on that either, exactly. right? That, you've already paid the tax on that Roth money. They're going to inherit that money, mm-hmm. not have to pay tax. There is a caveat. They do need to mm-hmm. empty those accounts, though, within mm-hmm. 10 years. Yep. Uh, that was part of, part of the SECURE Act. So there's no specifics. There's you know no required minimum distribution per year. But by the end of 10 years from inheriting a Roth IRA, that money needs to be gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in some instances, you might have an amount you have to take out each year. We just did a video on this, kind of like the post-secure act. So depending on what type of a beneficiary you are, oh, like yeah. you might fall into that 10 year, you might have to take a little bit each year. So this is where the strategy really comes into play with these. And this is where, um, you know, okay, so I have this money in a Roth. Let's assume that you didn't use it. Something kind of funny that I heard at this continuing education mm-hmm. was um, the speaker was saying, like, you you may never know, like, if you did this right, but your kids will. <laughs> yeah. Because they're like, they're like, they're going to be the ones to pay the taxes yeah. or to inherit the money. And it was funny because the, the, they're like, your beneficiary is going to be like, but we work so hard for this money. <laughs> and so they're just kind of saying, like. We, we don't want to pay taxes. We want as much as possible. You want to pass on as much as possible too. Yeah. And so this is where like, it's really your kids or your beneficiaries that are going to see if you did this planning correctly. Right. I, right. Such a great point. That's really what we're trying to help people see is it's your plan. And what's part of your plan are your goals. Yeah. And if that includes like passing money on, that's part of your plan. So, so doing it right. Absolutely. Makes yeah. a difference. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so what what do we need to what do we need to be aware of? Like, what are there qualifications? What factors? If I want to do a Roth conversion, are yeah, there the, any? yeah. Let's 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 kind of think through this a little bit. Really, there's not a lot. There, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, you need a destination for that money to go, aka a Roth IRA mm-hmm. uh, set up somewhere. So if you if you don't have one set up already, you'd need to open one, which is easily done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So and then the the big thing about it is realizing that all right. I'm going to convert this in a year. I'm deciding how much to do as long as it's not a required, but let's assume mm-hmm. in this case, this is a voluntary uh, conversion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you just need, know that you're going to need to pay tax on, on the money that you convert. Mm-hmm. So you helped with tax season this yeah. year. So let's fast forward. Someone gets their 1099. R. Exact. Thank you. <laughs> and you get the document. Yep. So you're entering it on the tax return. Yep. So that now shows up. It's taxable. It shows up as income. Yes, it so does. So you enter that basically as like a wage, right? Yeah. That they would earn. From yeah. It, I mean, it's it's essentially yes. It's going to go. Online. It's going to be yeah. It's going to be part of their their adjusted gross income uh, mm-hmm. for the year. And we, that money comes right off. Yeah. Your custodian will send you a 1099R. You'll give that to your friendly tax preparer, mm-hmm. and they'll enter it into the software. And bada boom, bada bing, there it shows up. So yeah, you're going to be paying and and. What Michelle's getting at, I believe, is mm-hmm. you're going to be paying ordinary income, aka as if it was a wage. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You're going to, it's going to be in that tax bracket wherever you fall. So not mm-hmm. capital gain treatment, nothing like that. It's, it's taxable income. Mm-hmm. And so that's where, like at the end of the year, that's when you would have to pay that tax. Exactly. And this is where it even gets tricky. If I have to pay the tax now, ideally, if you have money set aside in a taxable account or a bank account, yeah. your savings, that can pay the tax. Yes. Otherwise, you're kind of eating to, into the benefit of what you're converting. Right, right. Yeah. And that's that's a great... And, and I would say, we'll get to this in a minute, but I'd say that's a reason potentially not to do a conversion mm-hmm. is if you don't have the cash to pay the tax due. Mm-hmm. Depending on how much you're planning in your situation, yep. it may not be a ton, but just know our, when you do it, just be like, all right, I know I'm converting... A uh, hundred thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. That's going to bump me into the twenty-four percent tax bracket. So I'm going to owe again. It's it's not all going to be taxed at twenty-four percent, but I'm mm-hmm. going to let's just say I'm yep. going to earmark twenty-four thousand in my you know high yield savings account. 
So that come April 15th, that is what I'm going to use to pay the tax. And then that 100000 goes from my IRA into my Roth IRA. And now I have $100,000 in my Roth IRA that I can take, enjoy, spend, or leave behind. Um, and it's going to be that full 100000 Whereas if you don't and you need to pay the, take the tax out of the conversion, then you're, you, that 100000 is going, is going to be closer to you know, 76, 78 when it gets over into, mm-hmm. into the Roth. Yep, exactly. So that's where we, ideally, the purpose of doing it is you have more money growing tax-free. Because exactly. Because now what happens is that 100 grows Grows, tax-free. yeah, tax-free, yeah. Which then we talk about what, how you should invest different types of accounts differently. If I'm never going to pay tax on this, then I probably want my most growth mm-hmm. type of investments in these. Oh, yeah. Which- you could check out our video on asset allocation but like this is this is the yeah. stuff like asset location yes. sorry that's what i meant is like what you're then investing this is where it's like the planning is the the strategy of when when i do something and then what i do with something yeah. so like where it's invested now wh- i change this and now it might change something else exactly so. and that brings up another great point it's who who am i planning for mm-hmm. am i planning for me yeah am i planning for my spouse because mm-hmm. i think they're gonna outlive me by 10 years or am i pretty sure I'm not going to need this money, like you said, and I'm. this is money for heirs or beneficiaries. That I'm going to invest in each of those situations very differently. So yeah, yeah. yeah if, I, if I don't need this money, let's let's get that thing to grow as much as we possibly can. And, you know, exactly. if the account balance goes down a little bit in a year, who cares? It's okay. So we're going to start, we're going to talk about a couple more specifics to this, and then we're going to get into kind of like the, maybe when not to do it, so more okay. of the strategy. Um, so can you do this multiple times in a year? You certainly can. Okay. So there's no limit on how no. many times. There's no limit on the amount that you can do. I don't think, I mean, no, there's no limit on the amount when you say how many times, unless your custodian mm-hmm. puts limits on you, yeah. but no, you can do it. You can do it as much as you want. You could just create, you know, cause you know, some people will just create a paycheck by doing that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and saying I need yep. I'm going to take monthly money out of this, uh, you know, out of my IRA. There's no reason you couldn't just convert that to a Roth either. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's some of the stuff is, um, this is where we start to get into the timing and when you want to do it. You ideally you're, you're planning ahead of time. So even if this, you're doing this yourself and you're just now hearing of this and you do your own tax return and you know, you enjoy this, uh, you want to be thoughtful of planning ahead. So you Mm -hmm. know what else is happening for the year. Because again, this, just like if you were to take money out in retirement, retirement on top of social security, these are, these can be Roth conversions on top of anything else. So if you worked part of the year right. or you retired partway through the year, this is going to be on top of that. Great point. Yeah. So it could be that you're planning and you're doing all that planning early in the year after you've done your tax return, maybe, yeah. or you do it at the end of the year once now you know what the rest of the year looks like. So now it's actually saying, okay, how much is left in my tax bracket that I could actually exactly. use up? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's where it is maybe if you've you got something in your head, back to our previous example where we wanted to be conservative and we really don't want to b- bump above that 12% tax yeah. bracket, um, that may not be realistic if you have a lot of other income coming in. Um, but that's why it may, you know, let's let's do a little maybe at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. and then let's kind of see what happens throughout the year because mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to pick up this, you know, uh, contracting gig that paid me $10,000 and now, oh, whoops. And yeah. I did, you know, you just not, things come up, you know, the, the, you just, you're not sure. So that's why, you know, then you get towards the end of the year, you've got a very clear picture and then you can decide, ah, here's exactly where I'm at. Let's convert a little bit more, mm-hmm. top off that bucket and then, you know, call it. Mm-hmm. I think an ideal time to really be doing this is kind of this October, November when you've got most of the year behind yeah. you, but you also don't want to be doing this in December because most custodians are swamped with yes. paperwork for so many different things. Yes. So you also don't want to be the last person in to do it and then it doesn't get done. Exactly. Like there's, so I just feel like that October, November is kind of a good window. Yeah, kind of like that seems to be when we do a lot of our tax mm-hmm. planning, you know, for clients listening, you know that, mm-hmm. that that's when we're going to be. Wanting to understand, you know, get that last pay stub in so we can estimate as mm-hmm. close as possible what your income is going to be for the year. Yeah, exactly. No, that's helpful. Okay. So let's shift a little bit. We've talked about why you want to do it, who it's for, for especially for people passing on money. Um, but there are, so so I think about this, um, I, even like a couple years ago as, as Roth conversions, you know, they've been around for years, um, but... I feel like there kind of becomes this craze of like, oh, this is such a great planning tool. And it's like, you know, and I just think of like some of these memes or whatever you've seen. It's like, you get a Roth conversion yeah. and you get a yeah. Roth conversion. Right. Okay. We're like, this isn't something where some, some advisors may think everybody needs one, yeah. but there are times when it doesn't make sense at exactly. all. So you actually have to be really careful of, you have to have a reason for why to do them because it actually could 
make it complete nonsense. Yes. It could be nonsense. That's why, yeah, once again, don't take your financial advice from TikTok or <laughs> CNBC or, you know, they're, they're not Check. taking into con- into account your entire situation. All right, um, so give us, yeah, give us some time. So I'll throw out a couple shouldn't. and then you can, you can fill in the gaps. Uh, one we mentioned already, it's not like a hard and fast rule, but typically if, you know, if you're trying to maximize that Roth, have money set aside to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm, So you don't mm -hmm. need to eat, eat away from your contributions. Mm -hmm. Another one is if you know that you're going to be leaving money to it, let's say a charity, Mm -hmm. you know, um, like you're, you're very charitably inclined. You're, you're leaving money to a charity. No reason to convert that money and pay tax on it because the charity is going to get inherit that money and not have to pay taxes on it anyways. Um, so if you're doing something called QCDs or qualified charitable distributions, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, that money's coming straight from your IRA Mm -hmm. uh, each year and the charity is getting that, that, that great benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, the, the last one that I can think of would be, um, if you are going to be in a lower tax bracket in the future, Mm -hmm. uh, probably yeah. wait to do the conversions until you're in that lower tax bracket. Yeah. Unless, hey, unless you just love your uncle, uh, Sam, and, and really want to you know, make sure he gets as much as possible, then sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can convert in a high tax year, but yeah. uh, I'm kidding. Realistically, you'd want to do that um, in, in your lower tax brackets, why, which is why typically we'll see it after your earned income has stopped or significantly reduced is when we kind of start to bring this to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that's really interesting. I think you kind of touched on, um, I think sometimes, so sometimes people retire and, uh, their normal income stops, but you know, for executives who might have payouts that happen for a year or two after it's, it's, so what's interesting is I think sometimes when we talk about like getting a financial plan, making sure you're doing what you need to, sometimes it does look like uh, you have a year or two where you're actually doing nothing yeah. that you're just receiving the income that's trailing in that are benefits yeah. that are paying out and you're actually doing no planning strategies. Like that is your strategy. Yeah. There's not a lot of action, but in the next two years after that, that's when you're going to have a lot of things like strategy wise. Yeah. So I think people can even get stuck in the, I need to be doing something, but sometimes that is part of your plan for that year. Or two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you, yeah. That's a great point. Like if you've got um, restricted stock options, you know, Mm -hmm. and you retire, you still may have a few vesting periods left um, where depending on how it's set up, you may be Mm -hmm. realizing some, some, some significant income uh, on top of that. So that's, that's another really good point to consider. Mm -hmm. I think of the, uh, so you touched on kind of when money's going to charitable organizations. And this, this was, I mean, I think it was like a few years ago, we had a client where I knew everything's going to charities Mm -hmm. like when they pass away. Um, But they have, you know, maybe like high pensions now. So they have high income now. Mm -hmm. So these are funds that they're going to organizations and you touched on it, but like now it becomes, okay, not when I'm, um, after I'm no longer living, but right. it's even during my lifetime, I have RMDs and I can give those to charities now yeah. I can do QCDs. And now I'm decreasing my taxable income because when that money goes directly to the organization, instead of to you as exactly. an RMD, it's not taxable. Good point. So. Yeah. Thanks for, for cleaning that up. No, it is a great, good. it's a great, um, planning opportunity for those who, who, want to and and have the means to do it it's really really Mm -hmm. powerful yeah but i it's it's just funny because sometimes it's kind of like okay this strategy may not work for them because their goal is different Yeah, exactly but um it's it's so it's something different right it's a different planning tool or technique Mm -hmm. that they should be taking advantage of Mm -hmm. which is like this is what just what makes it fun and exciting for us because we're like oh well then this should be yeah what Every, they should be doing. Everything's, yeah, everything's a little bit different. And you said it earlier. It's what are your goals? Mm-hmm. What are we planning for? That's that's mm-hmm. where we start. Yep. Okay. So we've touched a lot on um, people that are retiring, Roth conversions kind of after working, you've saved all this money, but there are other things to yeah. get money into Roth. So now let's talk a little bit to the younger person who has higher income. What are the ways to get money into Roths now while they're working? Yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a, Great, great news, hopefully, for those of you who are listening and you're like, I'm not anywhere near retirement. Mm-hmm. And between my spouse and I, we make too much money. I tried to do a Roth conversion. I got slapped on the hand by the IRS when I did it. And now Roth mm-hmm. is done for me. Boohoo. Um, which is sad. I, I do realize that. Mm-hmm. And, but there is hope. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, there are phase out limits for direct. Now we're just talking direct Roth IRA contributions. So, you know, Roth IRAs have been around since, I don't know, 90? Long time. 
I yeah, summarize not that, that by long. Yeah, long time. yeah, like, I've been yeah. around for a while. Yeah. yeah, and so you know, which is it's been a great tool. You put the money in; it grows tax free. It's wonderful. The, mm-hmm. the the limits are relatively low yeah. compared to mm-hmm. retirement accounts yep. like four hundred one ks and four hundred three bs. Don't ask me why. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this year there sixty five hundred dollars is the is the contribution limit twenty twenty three um, for those under fifty. If you're 50 or older, you can add an extra thousand, so $7,500, but that's, that's it. And then there are phase out limits for your income. If you are single and you are, the phase out starts at 138,000 and you're completely phased out at 153,000 in 2023 for married filing jointly. It's a little bit more. 218 is where the phase out begins, and then you're cut. You're closed out at 228 thousand dollars. So you're thinking, mm-hmm. awesome, Jake. That's wonderful. My my spouse and I we mm-hmm. make 300 thousand dollars a year. So you're saying I can't take advantage of this until I'm retired and start to do those conversions you were talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Not quite. You can do what's called a backdoor Roth conversion, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what that is is you essentially are going to contribute. Let's say you know you are going to contribute 6,500 dollars into your traditional IRA. If you don't have one, it's really easy to open. And then you're going to do what's, you're going to basically say, all right, custodian who's holding that IRA, I want to take that $6,500 once it's settled. And I want to just go ahead and convert that directly into my Roth Mm -hmm. IRA. Um, No tax penalty there. Now you're not going to get the deduction for that IRA contribution. And if you're above, there's other limits for that, which we won't get into today, but likely you're, you're not going to get a deduction. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're going to, you're going to put money in. You've already, it's after tax money into the IRA settled. I'm converting it to the Roth IRA. Now that money's in your Roth IRA Mm -hmm. and it's going to stay there. So you can still contribute if you choose to. And this is a great strategy for those who, let's say you're, you're in a great position. You're maxing out your retirement benefits. You know, you're hitting those 401k or 403b annual limits. You know, you're, you're, you've got a great emergency fund built up. You've got a little extra money that you're throwing into a taxable brokerage account and, and you're like, I, you know, I could, I could put another 500 mm-hmm. bucks a month, you know, into this mm-hmm. IRA and do these Roth conversions yep. or better yet, you know, if, if you've got a, a bonus coming in or something, you know, early in the year, do it all at once, mm-hmm. throw yeah. $6,500 into your IRA, convert it to Roth and mm-hmm. be done for the year. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. That's okay. the back door. You, you may hear it called a backdoor Roth IRA or a mm-hmm. backdoor strategy. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And what I would say, if you're going to do that, be sure that your accountant knows how to handle that oh, on the tax return yes. and that your custodian. So what I am seeing more and more is that usually custodians know how to handle these things. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's other people that help you make sure these things get done. So a custodian is where your account is held. You need to make sure if you're putting money into the IRA and then you're turning around and putting it from the IRA into the Roth, that both of those steps are getting completed. Yes. So you need to make sure to follow through if you're doing this yourself, that those both get done. Yep. Then you need to make sure that your tax preparer yes. is reporting it correctly. Yes. Yeah. Cause we, we've mm-hmm. seen that too, uh, in the tax world that, you know, we'll get in, you know, old, old, older accounts or, or prior years mm-hmm. returns where, it's just it didn't show up correctly, mm-hmm. and you ended up paying the tax again. Yeah. So you 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 take that sixty five hundred dollars in our example uh, into your IRA. You know you've already paid tax yeah. on that money; it's income, and yeah. then it shows up again as earned income on yeah. your tax return. So yeah. n- not great. I mean, yep. it's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal because let's just pay tax once. Exactly, and it has to get cleaned up. And so yeah. we're just telling you: make sure these pieces are getting done if yep, you're doing exactly. this. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So then beyond that, if you're a high income earner, if you work at an employer who allows something even above that, you can do a mega backdoor Roth. Explain that. Oh my gosh. And we will link some resources here that will go Mm -hmm. way, that go way more detail than, than I will describe. Mm -hmm. Um, but the mega backdoor Roth, first of all, I I don't like that name because it sounds like nefarious. (laughs) It's a mega backdoor Roth. Roth. It's, it's, it's not nefarious. It's, it's, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's it's com- it's completely legal and all right this is for those you know higher pretty high income individuals because you know in this example uh we're going to we'll, we'll take your workplace 401k um you know let's say you work at a, a public company so you've got a 401k the same thing applies uh with a 403b uh and you've got the limit this year if you're under 50 is 22,500 for employee deferrals which means that's money that's I'm taking out of my paycheck every pay period and it's going into this account and I'm maxing it out 22,500 mm-hmm. employee deferrals. I'm also getting a match from my employer. Mm-hmm. Let's say I'm getting $7,500 mm-hmm. just because I want to keep the math simple mm-hmm. that my employer is putting in because that's a percentage of, of my income. So I've got 30,000 mm-hmm. that I've 
you know, between myself and my employer has put into my 401k, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. There are limits though on money that total monies that can go into a qualified plan per year. I believe in 2023, it's 66,000. Sounds right. Yeah, it was 61 last year. I think it bumped all the way up to 66,000. So if you're doing the, the math with me, we did 22,500. We got an extra 7,500 from our employee match. So that's 30,000. Mm -hmm. Um, that means we have $36,000 left yep. that we could contribute. Now, there's some rules here. A, your workplace plan would need to allow after-tax contributions. Mm -hmm. I can't defer anymore and get a tax deduction, right? I'm done with that. Yep. But if I decide, you know what? I've got a little extra breathing room. I, I, I really want to supercharge this account. Mm -hmm. I can defer an extra $36,000 if I'm super saver, max or outer guy mm -hmm. or gal. Mm -hmm into my after-tax portion of my 401k account. And, and not all custodian, yep. and what I mean by custodian is if your workplace plan even has this option, not all of them do. Mm -hmm. So you may be thinking like, like I, this isn't even an option for me. You can skip forward yep. a, a minute or two. Um, but if, if they do, then you defer that after-tax money. Again, you've paid tax on it, mm -hmm. uh, an extra 36000 Now you have two options at this point. If your employer has a Roth 401k as part of that plan, mm -hmm. Most of them will let you just go ahead and convert that, just like we were talking about in the, in the backdoor example from IRA to Roth, yeah. from after-tax 401k into Roth 401k. Mm -hmm. They'll let you do that. Yep. Now, if they don't have that or, or you decide, you know what, I don't really want to do that. I, I'd like more control over mm -hmm. that money. I want to convert it into my own Roth mm -hmm. IRA yep. account. That's where this mega backdoor started. So th this, again, your employer plan is going to need to not only allow you to do after-tax contributions, mm -hmm. the second thing, they're going to need you to do um, in-plan conversions. Yep. Meaning, I'm still employed with this company, but I call up my custodian and I say, hey, I, I put 36000 in in my after-tax. Mm -hmm. um, I need you to either directly move this into this outside Roth IRA account for me mm -hmm. or just write a check And I'll and because some, some people... I have experience with this. They, they literally send you a check for benefit yeah. of you, but you know, with your account number and everything, mm -hmm. and you need to get you it to, to your, it Roth your Roth IRA. IRA. So it can be complicated. Like I said, it's not for everyone, but if you're really looking at supercharging, mm -hmm. that, that's 36K yep. Yep. that you could get in one year into a Roth IRA, regardless of your income, yep. if all those things line up for you. Um, that's another just great strategy that not I don't think too many people are aware of. Yeah, and you're, we're, what we're basically doing is saying we're getting this 30, 36, this additional 36K in this case yeah. into this never taxable again exactly. bucket. Yeah. And so the cool thing is, is like this is the kind of stuff when we say we work with ongoing clients, these are the things that we're helping to manage. Yeah. Okay, you've funded it. Okay, now let's move that into your Roth IRA because mm -hmm. now it can be invested in anything. Yes. So it doesn't have to stay in with limited options. Right. It's pieces like this. There's always things to be doing. So, yes. And making sure you're doing it throughout the yeah, year. Yeah. And, and you just said it. That's person. I mean, in a previous mm -hmm. life, you know, I had an employer that did offer after tax contributions. Yep. They, they offered in plan conversions. They also offered a Roth 401k. Mm -hmm. yep. But to Michelle's point, I didn't love their investment options in mm -hmm. the 401k. Yep. Um, my pre tax money was all there. So I, I, oops, I elected the latter and, and just rolled it into my, my personal IRA. Yeah. Exactly. Roth IRA. Yep. No, that's great. I think this is just really helpful. So it's basically, you don't have to wait till retirement. There are ways to do it. And yeah. this is just a few, this is kind of like these building blocks when you say, I want to save this much. Okay. Then this much, or you're someone who is able to save a lot more. Yeah. There are options. There's ways to do this. That's yeah. exactly what we're building your plan for. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. And you mentioned this, we're going to point to all of these videos topics or blog posts that we've written, um, in the show notes. So you'll see those links there. Um, so the goal of this really, these Roth conversions is to say, we're getting money from always being taxable in a 401k when it comes out to an IRA, it's always going to be taxed when it comes out. We're really just saying, let's get it to be never taxed again. Yeah. And, and really, I think, you know, kind of one question, you know, we, we get, or you may be thinking is, okay, so you mentioned these three buckets, always taxable, never taxable, sometimes mm -hmm. taxable. What's the, what's the ideal scenario there? Yeah. And I don't know that there is one. Again, it depends yeah. on the person, but I think I can say it's good to have options, yeah. right? When you're thinking about, all right, I retire at, at 60 years old. I may live to be a hundred. Mm -hmm. I've got 40 years that I need to Use all of this money that I've been, you know, working so hard to save over the years. Um, it's good to have 
different options as you go in different stages of life because your life could change over that that time. So to have the option of, you know, I have a a lot of, you know, I've got assets built up in my taxable brokerage account. I'm very comfortable. I can select the lots I want to sell each year, you know, and I can really Mm -hmm. optimize my tax situation that way. Or you know what? I'm going to have a pretty high tax bill this year, but I, I really need some extra money. I'm just going to pull 10, 10 grand out of my Roth, you know, because I really, I really want to take this trip and it costs more than I, you know, just, so just having those options, I think, you know, have it, there's no hard and fast rule on numbers, but just having options as you're entering it and in retirement can just kind of take a load off and just give you some flexibility. Yeah. No, I think that actually is the ideal scenario is that you have something in each bucket Mm -hmm. so that now when we say this is how much I need to live on, the questions we're asking is where does that money come from? Right. And so now we're just saying, okay, a little from here, a little from here, a little from this account, the always taxable, the never taxable, sometimes or maybe. That's really where we're saying the ideal scenario is to have options. Exactly. Yep. That's and if good. and if you're leaving it behind, you know that that IRA that you're leaving to heirs is always taxable to them too versus, mm-hmm. you know, the Roth they're going to have to take the money out, like we said, but they're not going to pay tax. Exactly. No, this is really helpful. All right. Thank you, Jake. I think um, this has been enjoyable. Did we cover enjoyable. it? Yes. Did, did we achieve our objective? Everything. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out. All right. People email are going to let us. us know. They're going to email us and tell us if we've completed the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say accepted, but we already did. Yeah. And, I, you know, we threw, you know, got a little technical here. Yeah. You know, it, uh-huh. it, there are some, some complexities here. So if you have other questions, you know, please, like Michelle said, email mm-hmm. us podcast at financialdesignstudio.com. Also, check out the resources um, in the show notes mm-hmm. to this episode because they are plentiful mm-hmm. and you know you can, you can stop, rewind mm-hmm. the podcast or, or the YouTube videos or the blog articles you know, and, and really, really dive in there. So hopefully you find some use out of this. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. I think you covered it all. Yeah. You can follow up with us. Any of those channels. Some people like to watch videos. Some people like to listen or read. So they're all out there and we will see you next time on the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks everyone. Thanks for listening. To find any links or resources related to this episode, check out our show notes. Your host was Michelle Smallenberger, a certified financial planner and CEO. The guests featured are from Financial Design Studio, a team of experienced fiduciary fee-only advisors based in Chicago. Anna Lewis is the executive producer of the Behind the Designs podcast. And as always, for more information about Financial Design Studio and who we are, check out our website, financialdesignstudio.com. And final note, no content discussed on this podcast should be taken as financial advice. Financial Design Studio accepts no responsibility for your individual choices. We'll see you in the next episode.